No. Hello there. I'm Edwin Priest. I've just finished translating the Bible into Welsh. Looking forward to a, a well-earned rest now. How long did it take? Well, therein lies a tale. I really need to get this to the printers, so we don't have long to talk. So I'd better get cracking. So, in the Tudor time period, Queen Elizabeth comes to power and she's all like, I'm in charge now. And she changes the religion of Britain from Catholic to Protestant. Now, Catholics believe the Bible should be in Latin, so only the priests understand it, and they talk to the common person by sharing their wisdom. But Protestants think differently. They think everybody should be able to understand the Bible. But here in Wales, the Bible's in English. So, you know, we don't understand it anyway. Bishop Richard Davis has an idea, and he just has to convince Queen Elizabeth to go along with it. He knows the Welsh can't understand the Bible, and he's also very concerned they've got very low reading and writing ability. He also knows that Queen Elizabeth is concerned about a rebellion, so he makes a suggestion. But then Queen Elizabeth is all like, nah. But then later on, she's like, I've got a great idea. Why don't we translate the Bible into Welsh? Because that will unite my country and educate the Welsh. So she tasks five bishops with the job. And four of them are all like, nah, why bother? But luckily, the fifth one is Richard Davis, who thinks it's a great idea. Maybe because it's his idea. Now, Richard Davis needs help. Hey, he just needs to find someone who can speak Latin, Hebrew, Greek, English, and Welsh, as well as translate ancient manuscripts. So, you know, no problem there. So he gets in contact with his old friend, William Salisbury, who's already translated the dictionary into Welsh. And wouldn't you know it, he's already made a start translating the Bible to be read out in his own church. And he's done it in his own time, you know, for fun although illegally and hiding for his life from the Catholics. Anyway, they decide to start with the New Testament. And they were all like, by 1567, we'll be done. So then they get this guy, Thomas Hewitt, involved. And he's a professional church singer. And his job was to concentrate just on the book of Revelations. It was all going really, really well until an argument broke out over, get this, one word. See, it turns out that William Salisbury wants an exact translation of the Bible and Richard Davis wants something he can read out in church, something his congregation is going to understand a little bit better. So they were all like, let's go our separate ways. So they did, in a huff. Enter this guy, my old university friend, William Morgan. And he agreed, the Bible should be easier to understand. And he was all like, I'm gonna translate the whole Bible into Welsh, not just the New Testament. And well, this is where I enter the story because I assisted him. And for the next 10 years, we translated the whole Bible into Welsh. And then all we had to do was get it printed. Easy. Except, of course, it wasn't. William Morgan goes down to London, I'm on my way to London to stay with his good friend, Gabriel Goodman, who's from Rhythm, and Dean of Westminster. And he's all like, welcome to Westminster Abbey. So William Morgan is there to personally oversee the printing of the Welsh Bible. Because let's face it, no one in London speaks Welsh. But when the Bible starts to be printed, there's loads and loads of spelling mistakes in it. William Morgan's like, ah, stop printing, there's loads and loads of spelling mistakes. And the English are like, really? Does it even matter? Does anyone even speak Welsh? William Morgan's like, yes, it does matter. I'm a perfectionist.
So then he starts about correcting all the mistakes and, well, there's lots of them. It takes him another 10 years. But then at the end, he's all like, brilliant, I've done it, great. I just need to get this to the printers. Nothing's gonna go wrong this time. But then something went wrong. So yeah, then a big thing went wrong. And in all the confusion, the printers lost the entire translation. And they were just like, really, does it even matter? Does anyone even speak Welsh? And we were all like, yes, yes we, we do. do. So then William Morgan gets angry, but sadly dies before he has a chance to change it. But all is not lost, because what I should have told you is William Morgan was working the whole time with this guy, John Davies. And he was all like, I've been here the whole time. So him and another guy called Richard Parry continued to work on the revisions for the William Morgan Bible. And that's where I re-enter the story. I've just used my poetry skills to put the finishing touches on the 150 Psalms in the Bible makes them a little bit easier to sing in church. And as we all know, singing is quite important to us Welsh. So that's the whole story. I hope I haven't left anything out, the story or the Bible. Well, I suppose one day we'll find out if all this effort was worth it. That's nice. Well done us.